Let's take a look at the chain rule. The chain rule acts on composition of functions or layers. So you'll see in this example, we've got the derivative of cosine of x squared. So cosine is my outer layer, and I've got that inner layer, that composition of functions, the inner layer of x squared. So as I work through these, we call it a chain rule because we're multiplying that chain through. You're gonna get the pattern down and watch as I work this. So I first wanna start by taking the derivative of my outer function. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I take the derivative of the outer function and I leave everything else. So this is with respect to the inner function. So I leave the x squared. Now at this point, I am done with the outer function. So outer function check, and I'm ready to multiply on or chain on the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of my inner function x squared is 2x. So now I've got the derivative of that inner function check. And my answer is exactly what I've got here. Now it's nice to read your answer with the uh, 2x out in front. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2x sine of x squared. We lose sight a little bit of that chain rule though. But as we're working through, the first part here is the derivative of the outer. So the derivative of the outer with respect to the inner or the inner is fixed. And then the second piece here is the derivative of the inner. Let's look at another example. In our second example, we're going to look at the derivative of a square root of tangent. So let's do the derivative. So d dx of the square root of tan x. Now I'm looking again for those layers. I'm looking for an outer layer and the outer layer is going to be that square root and the inner layer is a little easier to identify. The inner layer is my tangent. So as I work through this one, this is going to be equal to, I'm going to take the derivative of that outer layer, but first let's rewrite this with a one half power. I just want to do a power rule here. So tan x to the one half power. Okay, so rethinking this again, my outer layer is the power and the inner layer is the tangent. Okay, so here we go. I want to take the derivative of the outer layer with respect to the inner. I'm going to leave tangent untouched. So the derivative of that outer layer is going to be one half of whatever's on the inside, and then it's one half minus one. We're gonna clean that up in a second, but I'm leaving the inner layer fixed. So tan of x. Okay, so the derivative of that outer layer is done. Now let's do the derivative of my inner layer. The derivative of tangent, hopefully you've got this one memorized. If not, keep working on memorizing those, and that's going to be secant squared of x. All I've got left to do is a little bit of cleanup. Let's move this up so I can continue working this through, doing just a little bit of cleanup here. And as I work through that cleanup, I've got my one half power. I've got tangent x. 1 half minus 1 is going to be negative 1 half. We're going to change that into a radical. And then I've got my secant squared x. That does not change. Let's turn this into a fraction. 2 lives in my denominator. Secant squared lives in my numerator. So secant squared of x. And this tan x with a negative 1 half power lives in the denominator. But I'm going to replace that 1 half power with a square root. So the square root of tangent of x. Now at this point at our answer, we've lost sight of that chain rule. But the chain rule is back up here. And as I look at that chain rule, I've got the derivative of my outer function first times the derivative of the inner function. Let's do another one. You are going to get this. In this next one, I've got the derivative of e to the 3x squared. I do have a composition of functions. e to the x would be an outer function. So I'm going to think of that exponential base e as my outer function. My inner function is that 3x squared. So I've got my inner function and my outer function. So as I apply my chain rule, I'm going to take the derivative of the outer function with respect to, or just keeping the 3x squared intact. 
I love e to the x because its derivative is itself. So the derivative of that outer function is just going to be e to the, and my inner function stays put. So e to the 3x squared, no change there. Now I've got to take the derivative of the inner function. I'm done with e to the, which means I'm just left taking the derivative of 3x squared. Now as I take that next derivative, the derivative of 3x squared, the 3 is going to stay in place. The derivative of x squared is times 2x. As I rewrite this one, I can rewrite this as just a single term. Let's put the 6x out in front. So that's going to be 6x. Nice to put that out in front of the exponential e to the 3x squared. Let's do another one. For the next example, let's do a natural log. So I'm going to do the natural log of uh, 5x squared plus 2x. I'm using prime notation here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my prime out in front so we know we're taking a derivative. Now my outer function is the natural log. So this is going to be my outer function or f. My inner function, again, it's really nice to see these layers, is going to be that 5x squared plus 2x. So this is my inner and my outer. Now, as I'm working through these, derivative of the outer comes first. So this is going to equal the derivative of the natural log of anything is 1 over whatever's on the inside. So taking that first derivative, it's going to be 1 over whatever's on the inside. And on the inside happens to be that 5x squared plus 2x. So I've done the derivative of the outer function with respect to the inner function. So the outer function is done. Now I'm moving on to the inner function only, which is 5x squared plus 2x. I'm going to multiply that on. It's going to be in a numerator. The derivative of 5x squared is 10x, bringing that 2 out in front. And the derivative of 2x is 2. Now I can go ahead and combine these. Um, not a lot I can do. Let's just write this as a single fraction. So 10x plus 2 divided by 5x squared squared plus 2x. Let me show you what this next one is. Okay, this next one is for you. We've got the derivative of cotangent x to the fifth. So I want you to pause this. If you need a hint, if you need the derivative of cotangent, I'm going to give that to you now. Otherwise, pause this and I will see you in just a minute. So the derivative of cotangent of x is equal to negative cosecant squared x. Okay, pause the video. See how you do. I know you've got this. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, let's see how you did. So cotangent is our outer function. Inner function is x to the fifth. So I've got our hint over there. This is my inner function. Um, the derivative of cotangent, I forgot my slash there, is equal to negative cosecant squared. So as I'm working through my derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of the outer function, keeping the inner one fixed. So we've got the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of whatever's on the inside. Well, what was on the inside was x to the fifth. Okay, so outer derivative done. Next, we're going to take the derivative of the inner function. So just down to the x to the fifth. The derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. Now, if you've got it in this form, you're great. We finished with the derivative of the inner. It's really best to write a monomial multiplier out in front. So I'm going to take just one last step and write this as negative 5x to the fourth cosecant squared of x to the fifth. Now I want to do another one with three layers. So our last one's going to have three layers in it. If you can get this next one, you are doing fantastic. Okay, here's our last example. It's got three layers as promised. So as I'm peeling those layers apart, I'm looking for the outermost function, which is cosine. The next function that I come to is the e to the, so this is going to be my middle function. And then finally, my x squared is my most inner function. So I've got outer, middle, and inner. So I'm going to have three different chains as I'm working through this one. So as I work through, starting to take my derivative, I'm going to work with that outer function first. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So negative sine with respect to everything else. So 
I leave everything else intact and I'm going to write that as an e to the x squared. So my outer layer is finished. I'm done with cosine. Next I work on to my middle layer which is my e to the. So I'm going to do my middle layer next. Do this in orange. The derivative of my exponential base e, super nice because I always get the exponential back. So this is going to be times e to the with respect to the x squared. So that means I'm just leaving it e to the x squared. So I am done with that middle layer. Next I'm on to my inner layer. Now the inner layer is just the x squared. That's my innermost layer. I'm done with the cosine. I'm done with my exponential base e. I'm ready to just take the derivative of x squared which is going to be equal to 2x. Now I'm going to reorganize this just because I cannot help myself to write it in a nicer form. I'm going to have that sine function last, the e to the x second, and the 2x first. Don't forget about the negative sign, so I've got negative 2x e to the x. It just reads a little cleaner here, um, e to the x squared, and then I've got sine of e to the x squared. Now you're getting the chain rule down. There are so many other things. Take a look at this next video. It's going to help you with the next step as you're continuing to learn differentiation. Thank you so much for watching.